Okay. I'm about to take off. Auto. Good. So it is flying with the command I sent to the aircraft. When I was a kid, my dream was to become a pilot. So eventually, um, I love anything aircraft. If I should see any aircraft passing by, I'll quickly run out. I'll be looking at it, you know, the love of aircraft that I have in mind. So I'll come out, I'll be looking at it while I was in primary school. That was um, the 2004, year 2005. So gradually, I'll just go around, you know, I'll pick charcoals and be drawing aircrafts all around people, fences, you know. So it's, I've been causing a lot of trouble with that, you know. People who actually knows that I love aircraft, those that know this guy is actually into something. He loves aircraft. That's why he's actually spelling our words, um, our words around. So um, there are some people who actually try to discourage me. They were like, oh, you know, <laughs> your family, you know, uh, you, you don't have, you are not financially stable or, you know, different kinds of discouragement and different kind of encouragement. So gradually, with the passion that I have for aircraft, I started going around refugees, picking up cans. You know, I started using, building aircraft with cans. Although I know they can't fly, but I just wish to build something that looks like aircraft. Gradually, gradually, I would trek all the way from Sama Rosaria to Nigerian College of Aviation Technology just to stay by their fence and keep watching their aircraft, the way they take off, the way they land, you know. I would just trek there and it was a far distance, but I don't care. I don't care how far it is. I will go there, I will keep watching their aircraft, the way it takes off, land, the way aircraft actually looks like, instead of seeing it far away. I'll come back home, I'll still pick up the can, you know, molding it the way the aircraft is, molding it, molding it. I later found out that I'm not the only one that has passion for aircraft. I found out that there was a guy not far from me too that loves anything aircraft. So I visited him one day. That was um, Sadiq Mohammed. So that was when we started building aircraft together with cans, although we, with the hope that one day we are sure that we will build an aircraft that will fly. So we started visiting Aviation College together from school. At times, we actually miss classes just to go and see the way because when we're in school, we close around 4 p.m. So by then, no pilot is actually flying. So we will wait or we will miss classes just because we want to go and see the way aircraft are. Gradually, we started making friends with little connection with what people are seeing in our area. So connecting us to some of their engineers and some of their pilots. So they took us in, they showed us the way aircraft flies, the way aircraft perform, the control surfaces and the rest, the engine, what type of propeller, you know, all those kind of things. I remember when we finished building aircraft, we just take it there, we trek from Samaru to NCAT just to show the engineers what we've done and they keep encouraging us. So eventually, with time, my dad told me that we'll be relocating back to Ilorin. That was in November year 2014. So I continued learning my handwork. I finished my GSS, so I left Sodix when I was about to finish my SS class in year 2016. There was not enough fund for me to write my SSC. I remember my dad called me. He explained to me that he doesn't have enough for him to pay my SSC. With the belief I will actually reach to a greater place, I keep working on my passion because I had to leave the work I was learning. I had to leave just to continue working on my dream. The reason why I got back to this aircraft because I actually gave up. My parents didn't have enough, you know. I was like, pilot school is 12 million, approximately 16 million. And who do I know? I don't have any connections. I don't have no one to actually pay for me. So I gave up. So one day I was in Ibadan. They called me for this world dream work that we should go and work somewhere. So I just got the call and when I picked it, I was so surprised it was my friend Sadiq. He called me and what he started saying was, Ali, you, are you still building aircraft? I told him, ah, Sadiq, 
it is really hard up here i i actually gave up he told me ali you don't give up could you believe that i later find out a aircraft that can actually fly i said wow are you for real he said yes i said how did you do it he said he used so 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 material he used polystyrene he got the engine online he got the remote control online and he sent me a video i was so surprised that was what boosted me up that was what waked up the dream that was actually dead on me that was what waked me up so gradually i started going around i continue with the can so because it was very hard for me to get polystyrene foam board then so that was when someone just called me because i've been telling people around i've been asking people around that please if they have um polystyrene if or if anybody should buy anything new that you should please you should help me with polystyrene so i started going online making research making research about how to make aircraft how to make an aircraft that will fly i just keep building the uh, body frame when i finish building the body frame i'll just take it out you know i'll just throw it and see if the if the aircraft if the aircraft can actually fly i bought one motor then i bought one esc one remote control for from one of my friends so I fixed it on the aircraft with the hope that, okay, the aircraft would fly. Meanwhile, I didn't know that was the starting point. So if I could remember, this was my first flying field. Four years, five years ago, this was my first flying field. I brought the aircraft. I kept it. I was not flying here then. I kept it there. I powered it on. The aircraft just took off. When the aircraft took off, although it was not the aerodynamic that made the aircraft took off, the aircraft with the power of the engine, so the aircraft was able to lift off, off ground. So immediately the aircraft lift off and the aircraft just yawed and, and nose down the pieces. Everything started, you know, all the materials I bought started burning. If I should crash, it would start burning. Everything started burning. Everything started burning. I was like, ah, this is this is stressful. But with the belief and let me say the passion that I actually have for aircraft didn't make make me give up on it. So I continued, you know, I with the crash that I had, all my tools, all the um, parts that I ordered online, they got burnt. So I had to go and work again with, with, with a lot of, you know, with a lot of efforts, with a lot of work, with a lot of um, spendings. I later figured out a, a aircraft that can actually fly. If I should remember, my first flying aircraft was Tampico. That was, that's the aircraft they usually use in um, NCAT because that was the first aircraft I will ever see or I will ever touch. I will ever touch in my life because I love that aircraft. So that was my first flying aircraft. With a lot of research, I I find out how to build the aircraft that can fly. You know, gradually I will do. I crashed a lot of aircraft. I wasted a lot of resources. I wasted a lot of money before I could get the aircraft that can fly. Now I'm about to power the aircraft on and connect to the system to get my data. So after then we we'll set our mission. Then we'll be taking off. Okay, this is the 40 kilometer radio. So, pre flight check. We need to check the aircraft control surfaces. Is everything intact? Anti collision lights on the green or on the red. Okay, I'm about to take off. Auto. Good. So it is flying with the command I sent to the aircraft. Altitude, altitude, altitude. Read my altitude for me. Mr. Abdul, please come closer to him. Altitude, flight mode. Good. At this point right now, I'm about to change the aircraft back to manual so that I'll take back the control, not on auto again that I'll take back the control to land it. So the aircraft has landed now, so we have to take it back, you know, and dismantle it. Okay, let's go. 
to know the wind direction, that's wind sub. So when the pilot is coming to land, you, know, you need to know your wind direction. 